Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and look at this. The, the pancake robot that I unboxed the other day was just busy making pancakes for me. And I made enough pancakes to form an opinion, and I'm going to tell you that opinion in just a second. You ready? Go. Ah, uh, thanks for sticking around. Okay, like any machine review I do, I'm gonna give you three things. I'm going to tell you how it works, I'm gonna tell you what I like about it, and then I'm gonna tell you what I don't like about it. At the end, I'll kinda give you my overall thoughts and, and then we'll we'll call it good. So so let's start and let's let's talk about this thing. So we just got done printing a bunch of pancakes and everybody was eating them. In fact, the last pancake made was, uh, well, that's Yoda. That's Yoda right there. Mmm, Yoda tastes good. It's interesting. The batter can't be too thick. I have to swallow the Yoda's ear, apparently. The batter can't be too thick. The batter can't be too thin. The pressure can't be too great or too little on the bottle itself. You'll hear about that in a sec. So we had to thin the batter with a little bit of milk, and that's the, that's the right way to do it. To load your pancake robot, you have this bottle, and it's got a little stopper at the bottom. The stopper keeps the batter from flowing out. It makes sense. This air tube provides the suction and the pressure to keep it in the bottle while it's not being used. And you put it in, and then, let's see if I get this right. You put it in, and then there's three slots. You put it in the topmost slot. The bottom part is still on. Once you turn it on, I don't know if you, let's see if you can hear it. It's kind of quiet. It's, for being a pancake robot, I guess, there was no precedent set for how loud a pancake robot should be, but I find it to be quiet. Okay, it's on, which means now, if I remove the stopper at the bottom, none of the pancake batter falls out. And that's because, well, that's because it's, it's on and there's, there's pressure holding it in. Okay, from here, what happens on this little LCD screen? I've got an up arrow, down arrow, and a play button. And I, I, just, I just select the G code that I export from the pancake printing program, which that's fun to say. And then once it's on the SD card and in here, I use this little pressure dial to fine tune the pressure. And I'll get into that more in a second. It prints, and by prints, I mean it extrudes the, the batter onto the, onto the griddle and then it cooks it. And then you, you, do, have to, you do have to flip it over. Uh, it, there's no, the robot doesn't flip it over for you yet. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this back on because it's a little loud. I'm gonna turn that off. Once the pancakes are done, obviously you get to eat them. The printing, the printing of the pancakes is, well, it's a, it's a little slow, but it, and, and it's meticulous. One of the things that we had to get dialed in was, was the batter consistency and the pressure within the bottle. And once you get your, you, you need to thin your batter a little bit. Like I said, we thinned it with milk. And then as it's extruding the batter, it it waves a lot or it's, it kind of creates crooked lines and that's because there's too much coming out. So if you adjust this pressure dial, it backs off the pressure and then flows a little bit better. So it takes a little, little bit of getting used to. Here's what I like about this. It's a freaking pancake robot. It's 2016, right? I don't have my flying car, but I've got a robot that makes pancakes. That's pretty cool. The neat thing about this is it's visionary in that this is the first iteration of the hardware that does this thing. And I talked to Miguel, who was the person that started the Kickstarter and invented this robot. And you could tell when he talks about this, he, he's got this passion in his voice. And this is version one of what's going to be iterative processes in the hardware building industry. I have no doubt about that. So all in all, here's what I like about this thing. I like how it's built. It's built extremely well. The, the controls are easy to use. Uh, the, the bottle itself is, is fantastic. It's sealed. The pressure system works and the, the batter does not come out if, it, if you don't want it to come out. The pancakes, well, it's a griddle, right? The pancakes cook. You can control the heat and it controls the, the time it takes to cook these pancakes. So, so all in all, I like this. I like the pancakes it produces, but again, that's, it's not really up to the pancake robot, right? That's up to my wife who made the batter and it's up to the temperature dial on the griddle depending on how I like my pancakes. So really I have to judge this on how well it makes the pancakes and not how well the pancakes taste. And as far as it making the pancakes, it has both good and bad points. It makes, well, here, you saw Yoda. Here's Pikachu, that's not too bad. 
The pancakes that it makes are, they're good. It looks good and it does it well. This leads me to the things that I don't like about the pancake robot. And part of the things that I don't like are simply because this is version one and it hasn't, the technology hasn't been fully fleshed out. It's slow. And by slow, I mean, we planned a dinner tonight for six people. It was my wife and I and our three kids and my good friend, Josh. The pancake printer was going to provide our main course. The only issue was it took a long time to make each pancake. And there was, there was no way that we could, using the pancake robot, feed six people in a timely manner. We could pre-make the pancakes and then warm them up. However, I don't, I don't think there's the magic in that. The, ma the magic is watching this work. It's, un it's unfortunate that it is slow. However, when I talked with Miguel, Miguel was very specific in saying that there is a new firmware that they're testing that allows you to adjust the speed of your prints. So you could print a faster pancake. Never thought I'd be saying that. As it stands, that's really the only negative about this thing. I mean, you have to understand, it is version one hardware, so, so the ability to, to dial in your, your settings, you know, your, your pancake batter consistency and your, and your pressure in the, in the bottle there, you, you know, the ability to dial those in isn't perfect, but here's the great part. Even as version one hardware, it allows you to dial that in. That's fantastic. They, they really thought ahead on a lot of this. It's sturdy, it will, well, when we put it away, if we can find room in the kitchen, we'll put it in the kitchen, but most likely it'll be on a shelf in the garage. I don't think that'll damage it one bit. And I think, I think it's hardy enough to stand the test of time. But honestly, I don't know how often we'll pull it out of the garage in order to make pancakes because it is somewhat slow. It is neat to show off to friends and it's neat that the kids are able to design their own designs, but I don't think that, oh, or, that overshadows really the, the speed issue. Once they get that taken care of, I think it's going to be a whole new ball game. And again, with this being version one hardware, all of the hardware that comes out next in its iterative process is going to be just more wonderful. You guys all remember Internet Explorer, right? Microsoft didn't get it right until it was version three. And this is better than Internet Explorer version one. Boy, I just geeked out there, didn't I? All right, the bottom line, should you buy this? Maybe. Why do I say maybe? Well, if, if you are an early adopter of technology, and even though this is a griddle, it's a robot and it's technology. So if you're an early adopter of technology and you don't mind making pancake batter, I think this is for you. It's, it's a lot of fun. And I think it's a good learning tool as well for designing things using vectors. However, I, it's not for everyone. Like I said, it's slow. They're, they are addressing that, but right now it is slow. And I, I don't think you can use this as a, as a fast functioning centerpiece. I think it's unique and I think it provides entertainment. I think it provides some learning and I, I approve of it. However, your best bet is probably to wait just a little bit. So it's a great thing. Just wait a little bit before you cash your, your check and buy it. All right, well, that's it. That's, that's the review of the pancake bot. Uh, I hope you found it informative. If you have any specific questions about this, please leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to address them. Give this a thumbs up if you thought, hey, I like pancakes. Share this with your friends who like pancakes. Big thanks to my patrons who pledged through patreon.com. I, I really appreciate it. Again, please don't give me money. Just give me digital high fives. But if you insist on going against my wishes, the link is down below in the description. Mm. All right, well, that's it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna eat Yoda's head. Hey, you guys, thanks again. And as always, high five.